Let me show you what 10 years can do. On the left, you have a 2015 Toyota Corolla. On the right, you have a 1998 Toyota Corolla. You need to see it again? You see, in society, things become safer. Cars first have seat belts, then they get airbags, then they get side airbags, and they get rear view cameras so you don't run over little children and pets. And we call that progress. You look at a headline like this. Your smartphone is millions of times more powerful than Apollo 11 computers and think, yeah, so what? Of course. In the computer field, it's called Moore's Law. Technically, we're talking about transistor numbers doubling every two years with a price halving. But in general, we extrapolated it to talk about technology in general. It just keeps on getting better and better and cheaper and cheaper. So what if things turn upside down? What if time went backwards and things got less safe as more time passed? Where would we be? Right here, right now, the coronavirus pandemic, where more people have died than in the last two big wars, the Vietnam War and the Korean War. And if you visualize better with big blobs here, the black blob is the current death from coronavirus, which is actually around 100,000 today. And the two bigger blobs are only World War II and the Civil War. Is it scary to think we might reach a number of deaths the same as in World War II? As many people have said, these are unprecedented times. And one of the unprecedented things is the government has to now make a decision. How do I make people less safe? The reason we're doing shelter in place is because we're decreasing the coronavirus spread. And it actually made us a lot safer. We also saw a drop in other diseases that are transmitted like diarrhea, the cold, eye infections. And because people aren't driving as much, there aren't as many car accidents. That's economic benefit plus lives that would have been lost or maimed. But as I said, there's no precedent for the government to reduce the safety standards. Remember Bill Gates? For the longest time, he tried to import a Porsche 959. You'd think the richest man in the world wouldn't have an issue, right? Nope. The Department of Transportation refused to give him an exemption. Porsche never submitted the four required models for a crash test. Never mind, they only made 337 of these cars. It took him over a decade before he finally passed a new law approving his car. Let me give you a few examples of what it'd be like if the government actually reduced safety standards. So here you have reports saying the states are raising speed limits near failing schools. Food standards are relaxed. Ah, just smell tests. Don't bother checking. Ah, you want to make sure the meat is well cooked anyways, right? And who wants to fight sawmill? It's too hard. It takes so much money. It hurts the economy. Let's just allow it. As you probably noticed, this is all fake news. Actually, it's satire from a site called The Onion. So how is the government supposed to move from the safety of the lockdown to the unsafeness of open life? Well, they can take an example from this thing called growing up. Did you know the older you get, the more likely you are to die? Well, I think we all knew that. But if you think about it, isn't it safer as a baby? Never going anywhere, never going out. Your parents pad everything. They plug the socket so you can't accidentally electrocute yourself. Or as a kid, you always stay in the same neighborhood. Everybody knows you. You never get lost. Well, you know, traveling is very dangerous. There's plane crashes. But as you grow older, you take more risks. And most of the times, it's worth it. This is Bali, by the way. The problem with the California roadmap is that they use this term reopen safely. And you can't because there is no such thing. Reopening will always be risky. And there's absolutely nothing short of eradicating coronavirus, which will not happen in the U.S., that can change that. Even a vaccine won't be 100% because it won't be 100% effective, plus not everybody will get it. I think the emphasis should be on safer. That is something we could teach people. We can't change them all of a sudden from safe to unsafe or from unsafe to safe, but we could change them little by little. I was in Queentown hiking about a decade ago and afterwards went to get some ice cream. As I approached the front of the line, an elderly Chinese lady rushed up, waving some cash around saying, ah, I want this, I want that, I want that. Of course she was speaking in Chinese. The people behind me grumbled. I told her in Chinese, ma'am, if you wouldn't mind waiting in line, I'll help you order when you get to the front. She was very happy to comply. She got her ice cream, the people in back weren't angry about someone cutting in line. I'm sure that they will think again about cutting line in the future. She might still cut, but she'll hesitate just a little bit more. Right now, the problem is people are thinking masks and social distancing are an imposition. They're restricting freedom. 
Well, let's reframe it. Let's appeal to America's competitive spirit. Look at the U.S. Look at Germany. Germany is doing better than the U.S.? Can you believe that? Do you want to lose to Germany? Come on, if we all work a little bit harder, we can make our rates even better. Hey, it's unprecedented times. We all know that. Reopening, going from safe to unsafe. So maybe it's time to try unprecedented strategies as well.